Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be talking about wild farming, and that means we're going to be teaching you how to farm crops on a wild setup, how to create wild plants that you're choosing, and the methods you guys need to know in order to make this easy. And of course, to get it started, we're going to be talking about the first thing is the plants. For the most part, if you guys didn't know, if you guys had this little guy right here, a pip, plant the plant into the tile what you're going to get is a wild plant a wild plant you will know because they do not have the domesticated growth cycle highlighted and it's faded out that means that you're going through the wild cycle the benefits of this is going to include that you do not need to provide any fertilization or irrigation meaning that these plants are going to be standalone you have to not do anything to maintain them and when it's ready to harvest you're going to have food waiting for you and of course, this comes at a trade-off as uh, you're going to have to wait a lot more cycles compared to a domesticated plant. In this case, this is about four folds already. So we have to wait four times as long. But of course, that means we don't have to irrigate water or dirt. And a lot of the times, that's not bad for a little bit of passive calorie generation. And of course, if you guys didn't know, this little guy, the pip, will grab seeds and plant them into the tiles. The way that I would recommend this is lay out your area that you guys want to wild farm. I would recommend looking up the stats of wild farming for each of the plants as the only thing you really need to consider is the size of the plant. Something like an arbor tree may require a different pattern so that you get the maximum amount of branches per tree. Or you could just sacrifice a tree so that you have more trees and a closer density. That's going to be really up to you. The only plant that has a different pattern in and of itself is going to be the plants that grow upside down. But you guys can look more into that in the pip video that I'll link in the description down below. I would recommend, of course, for the pit mechanics, you guys always have to go top to bottom, meaning you always do the top row first. And then when you do each of the rows, you always go right to left. So the best example would be down here as this bottom row is not tapped into yet you would do the top to left or top to bottom and then right to left and in which case we have these three rows done and if we want to do this row we're going to want to use ladders on top of the natural tiles put seeds in the refrigerator because i'm going to be growing sleet weed here and of course the pip will take care of the rest once he plants on this tile, he's going to want to plant on this tile, so we'll remove the ladder, and then we'll go right to left. The spacing between rooms is always going to be four tiles. This looks a little bit weird because it's three tiles, but compared to the next row of natural tiles, this is four tiles. Now, of course, depending on what you want to grow, the next thing you guys are going to want to worry about is the temperature. In my case, sleet weed has to be in a minus 55 to 5 degrees Celsius, and the easiest way to do that is to run some aqua tuner loops. The aqua tuners running in the liquid medium will chill the room to the desired temperature. A lot of the times you only need one tile every so and then. And it will slowly chill down the entire room this way. You guys can choose to do a different pattern, but this is the method I'm choosing to do. As you get a lot more water bubbles, mean you're going to have a lot more moving thermal energy. And by only flashing one tile of radiant piping, we're not unnecessarily leaking out cold thermal energy. Now, of course, the thing about this is that you might have to heat leak out. And the best way to manage that is with a double liquid lock so that you have a vacuum in the middle. This means that the moment that the temperature gets set, it's not going to change anymore as the vacuum does not allow any heat transfer. The only thing you're worried about at that point is any heat your auto supers make, your critters, and or if you guys are using insulated tiles, there's going to be a little bit that leaks out, but it's going to be so slow that it's not really going to matter. Now, of course, once you guys have that set, we are going to be talking about what we're growing. I'm trying to grow, actually, the berry sludge, which uses both sleet wheat grain and bristle berries. As you can see, we have the sleet wheat and bristle berries, but on top of that, we also have something called grub fruit. The reason why we're going to be growing this plant up top is because of what these critters do. If you guys are not familiar with the sweetles or the grub grub, both of these critters actually give a buff called sweetle tending, which is a growth speed of 5%, or the grub grub rub. The grub grub rub is 50% growth speed, and of course, these bobs are amazing on the wild plants. They do apply to the wild plant, which means it speeds up the wild growth time by a lot. And of course, by having a lot of grub grubs on each layer, we increase the growth speed of the wild plants. If you guys also wanted to, you guys could shrink down the size of the rooms and then add a farm station. 
as that adds the farmer's touch buff and that actually stacks with the critter's buff now the one problem with this though is that the grub grubs grub rub right here and the sweetle tending buff does not stack and they actually override each other depending on what's recently applied meaning if i already have a plant with the grub grub rub if a sweetle goes up to it and tends to it it overrides the 50 percent growth so a lot of the times you want only the grub grubs However, you want to have the grub grub plants though because of how the sweetles are going to increase the chance of laying a grub grub egg by tending to a divergent plant, which in our case is going to be the grub fruit plant. Now, of course, all of these critters are wild. I would recommend going through your biomes, grabbing the sweetle eggs, sending them back home, getting them from the printing pod, and keep them wild as that means just as passive as the wild plants don't need any maintenance. They're going to go through their lifespan of 150 cycles, rub as much as they can, grow the plants, and basically increase the growth speed. Of course, that's why we have a critter drop off of top set to only the sweetles, and we sweep out all the eggs into this room. This room over here is going to be how we auto wrangle all the critters as the moment they're hatched and they are an adult they're going to be wrangled and moved to the appropriate room. By doing so, we're going to increase the amount of calories we generate. Of course, that's also why we have the auto sweepers in here. These are set up so that they overlap and touch every tile. This is so that our grub grubs, our sweetles, it doesn't matter the size. As long as we sweep out the eggs, they will never be cramped, so they will always be able to replace themselves. Of course, sometimes the grub grub might give you a sweet away, in which case we'll just relocate to the top. And of course, we made these natural tiles by using the deconstructing door method. I'll leave a link to that description down below as well. If you guys are having trouble setting up the natural tiles, or if you guys are going to go with the natural layout and put tiles on top of it like so, you might not have the luck of the draw to get it perfectly lined out. So we'll leave the video on how to generate natural tiles the easiest way in the description as well. But guys... This has been the Wild Farm. If you guys have any questions about this design, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.